Hello and welcome to December 11th, a little bit of Christmas. How not to let the Grinch of divorce steal your Christmas. I am Kathy Beatty with Divorce Support Anonymous and I'm so grateful that you join me. Thank you to those who have followed with me the past 11 days. This is December 11th. So I am grateful for your time and uh, just being able to connect with you. So thank you means a great deal to me. Wouldn't be any fun if I didn't have people out there paying attention and would love your comments. Uh, how has it been of help to you? Uh, so a couple of quick, quick, quick announcements. January 4th webinar, seven o'clock free. We'll talk about planning a future. And then on the 10th, we'll begin a new support group, which is going to be hybrid. Connect with me for registration form. December 11th is going to start divorce coaching after, um, life coaching after divorce, because there is life after divorce. And that's going to be in, begin January 11th online only. Okay, enough of that. Enough of all that stuff. So now I want to talk about the topic today. And the to, topic today is peace. I realized as I was going through my divorce and all of the turmoil and the tension and the stress of life and certainly of the divorce just got to be too much. And I know for you, there are moments when you are overwhelmed because it is just too much. And from that experience and also in working with people over the past 17 years, I realize that what our hearts long for most of all is peace. Peace inside of us. Please let all this tension and all this stress stop. We want peace in our relationships. We want peace with ourselves. We want peace with God. All of that, we want peace. And so I want to talk about that today and to give you some helpful tools on how to, um, how to get there and how to work on getting to peace. You know, there's a wonderful Christmas carol. I heard the bells on Christmas day and I haven't seen the movie yet, but there's a movie that has come out on how this was written back in 1863 by Henry uh, Wadsworth Longfellow. So, wow, talk about stamina and talk about staying around for a while. That's a long time for a Christmas carol. And yet it is one of my favorites, and I get choked up when I always when I get to this part of the song. There is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks a song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Oh, don't we know that? And in despair, I bowed my head. There is no peace on earth, I said, for hate is strong and mocks a song. And we, we could despair when we hear that and when that always gets my attention in that, in that song. And that was just really two different versions of the song. Uh, one's a direct quote and one was my trying to get a direct quote and you could despair there, but the next verse, the next stanza gives us hope. Then rang the bells more loud and deep. God is not dead, nor does he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail with peace on earth, goodwill to men. And you can just feel as you sing or listen to that Christmas carol, the despair and then the contrast of God's not sleeping. He's not dead. He's paying attention. And the truth will prevail and goodness will prevail and justice will prevail. I find that Christmas carol just incredibly uplifting and encouraging not because it is the despairing part, but the part that says God's not asleep. He's paying attention. And so as we look at how do we get to peace, how do we find peace uh, in our lives right now? And there's a, so many different areas where we need peace, right? We need financial peace. We need relational peace. We need peace with self. We need peace with God, the spiritual aspect of it. Also very important, of course, peace with God is the start of everything, because once you figure that out, everything else falls into place. But I want to give you just a, a couple of helpful tips. If you are just distraught, overwhelmed, and despairing, like the song said, number one, steal yourself. And you'll see behind me on my shoulder over here 
is a, a, a plaque that I have that says, be still and know that I am God. So just to be still. And sometimes when we do that, our mind starts racing and we can get very ten tense because when we're busy, we're active, we're distracted from, from our peace and all of the issues. But truth is we do need to calm ourselves and still ourselves to find peace. Breathing deeply actually matters because when we are stressed, we breathe very shallowly and we don't get good deep breaths in. So we don't engage our entire body. We don't get enough oxygen to our, to our body, to our brain. So breathing deeply is actually a way in which we can restore peace to ourselves. This has been proven over and over again and is just so simple, right? <laughs> well, God makes things simple. We, on the other hand, complicated a lot. So still yourself. And whether that's in the total silence or if that is with some music playing in the background, still yourself. Breathe deeply. Just don't move. Just find a peaceful spot. Be still. Breathe deeply. Number one, this is going to open up our mind, our heart, and our spirit and our body um, to other things two good things. And then we're going to hold on to that, which is good. We're going to look at the good things in our life. And this is the point where that gratitude, as we spoke about yesterday or two days ago, is vitally important because gratitude makes our world bigger. It's just a fact. When we are grateful, our world is bigger. Hold on to that, which is good. Find that which is good within your life to hold on to that, which makes you smile, that which makes gives you peace. It can be as simple as someone who placed their arm on your shoulder. And I have told the story many times when I was going through my divorce and went into church and just so hurting and someone would put their arm, just touch my arm. And it felt like salve to a burn. It was just so, so beautiful. So hold on to that which is good in your life. And then there's a verse that states it so beautifully. Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely. And there's a few other descriptors there. Um, all the good things. Think on these things. And this is a verse that when I get personally stressed or my mind is wandering in, in too much negativity, I say, well, wait a minute. Think on what is noble. Think on what is right. Think on what is pure. Think on what is good. And this can get me back in track. So that's a beautiful verse to help us to remember to hold on to that which is good. And thirdly, denounce your past mistakes and forgive yourself. Many of us are so tormented by our past mistakes that we can't have peace. It is time, friend, this can be the gift that you give yourself this year to forgive yourself of the past. You had reasons for doing what you were doing. It probably not healthy reasons if they were um, great mistakes, but you maybe didn't know better. Maybe you were desperate. Maybe you were depressed. Maybe you had some strange motivation to prove something to yourself or someone else. Who knows? We have so many reasons for our past mistakes. It just call it sin and get it over with, right? Denounce these past mistakes because they do not define you at all. Forgive yourself. It's time to let that sin against yourself go. Because until you forgive yourself, until you let it go, you will never have set peace with yourself. And forgiveness is something that we get with God. And when we ask God, God, and I've done this too many times that I care to confess, God, this was wrong. We're simply agreeing with what God says. God, this was wrong. It was sin. I am sorry. Please forgive me. And that with a sincere heart is all that needs to be done. And Jesus puts that upon the cross of Christ, never to be noted or spoken about in the heavenly realms again. Denounce your past mistakes. Forgive yourself to find peace. Create boundaries to guard your heart. 
This is important for our peace. We cannot let everyone have access to our mind and heart. We can't because they are not safe. They are not trustworthy. They are not mature enough to handle what you need um, help with. So create those boundaries to guard your heart. So very important. Those four things, still yourself, hold to what is good, Think of what's noble and good. Denounce your past mistakes. Forgive yourself. Create boundaries to guard your heart. These things are going to give you a peace in which you have never known. So let's talk about peace um, for our spirits. He was pierced for our transgressions. And this is a verse out of the Old Testament. And yet it is defining Christ in the New Testament and what he did for us. He was crushed for our iniquities, our sins. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. There's no condemnation for those who were in Christ Jesus. Our peace was bought. All of our punishment, transgressions, iniquities, sin, faults, mistakes were placed upon him. When you receive him, you will receive the peace that Christ has bought for you. He tells us, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Not like the world. Let your hearts, let not your hearts be troubled. Neither let them be afraid. Wow. Fear disrupts our peace constantly. And Jesus said, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't be afraid. I've got this. I've got this for you. And that includes your past and your future. If you partner with him, if you ignore him and say, no, I can do it on my own, God. And you're not going to get the direction that's really going to give you peace and happiness ever. Because God holds it within his hand. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding. You can be in the middle of all kinds of crap, but God can give you peace and it will guard your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Peace to you, my friend, a real peace. Not a uh, flippant um, Christmas card, cliche piece, but a true peace that is in the depths of your heart so that you can prevail through the month of December and into the beautiful life after divorce. This is Kathy Beatty with Divorce Support Anonymous, walking with you every step of the way through the trauma of divorce. Have a great December 12th and the rest of December, the rest of the year.